from the time I was young, I always heard about international events. Uh, for example, I remember I was three years old, and I remember hearing about people talking about the, the German invasions, because we were at the time in France. And so I even had dreams about tanks coming, because I would hear them talking about this during the daytime. And at nighttime, I would have nightmares about the tanks were going to come. So I, somehow, international affairs always were part of what I heard about and what I was interested in. My father, Clarence Young, was a very, he was a diplomat, he was a consul general, very uh, very, very loyal to China. He would be talking about how important it was to do things to help China, and he really didn't want to spend a lot of time on his personal things, he just wanted to do things that were good for the country. And later, with my stepfather, Wellington Koo, it was interesting, one time we were going to go on vacation. He was using a uh, United Nations passport. And somehow the passport, somehow on the passport it said, he's uh, without a country. He, that was why he was using this special kind of passport. And when he saw that, he says, I'm not a person without a country. I will not go. We said, well, then you can't go with us. He said, well, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go because I will not say that I'm a person without a country. I have a country. So from my young age, I heard many diplomats in our house, many people talking about world affairs. I thought when I grew up, I was going to go be a diplomat. But of course, when I graduated from, con from uh, co uh, college, there was no China to be a diplomat from. I was an American citizen, so I couldn't be American diplomat. So I ended up not being a formal diplomat. But actually, when I look back on my career, uh, particularly my last assignment, uh, bringing General Motors to China, uh, that was really a diplomatic uh, assignment, even though it was obviously business. And uh, the same thing is that in the activities I've been doing with Ban Hui with Committee 100, it's also diplomatic. And the, now what I'm doing, a lot of cultural people-to-people -people activities, it is also basically diplomatic, trying to use different ways to improve the relationships between China and the United States. Uh, my colleague and I, two vice presidents, was Rudy Schles and myself, and our job was to help to make this project, to help General Motors win this project, because it was a competition with all the other car companies of the world, that China was going to give one uh, uh, company the uh, opportunity to come to China and build cars there. So we had a, a big challenge. Even though I was born in China, then I left China, I didn't live in China, I guess I had some sensitivity about thinking about how the Chinese think. For example, at one point, uh, you know, the way the Americans go, the way you're supposed to do, you say, uh, I'm the best, I'm number one, I want to come in, I want to make a lot of money, you can make a lot of money with us, so we should win together. And the Chinese don't respond that way. For example, we once uh, told a story about um, how we went into a country and there was 10,000 people making 1,000 cars, and then when we worked with them for a while, we was so successful, it was uh, 1,000 people making 10,000 cars. So instead of 10,000 people. Uh, but so the Americans were very proud because obviously increased efficiency. But the Chinese said, well, what happened to the 9,000 people? We have to take care of the 9,000 people who are not working. So you had to look at it from their perspective. They wanted really to build an industry in China, not just to make a lot of profit right away, but they wanted to build a modern industry in China. So they didn't want quick, fast, profitable right away. they rather wait longer and spend more time and then be at the same level as the rest of the world. When you're dealing with a different culture or with a different group of people, it's really to think about what their needs are. So it becomes a win-win. Even today, when I work in culture, there's so many groups saying, oh, we want to go to China and bring our wonderful orchestra, our wonderful dance group to China. We're so great, and they'll really enjoy it. And I said, well, why would they want you? <laughs> so think about what are they, well, maybe what they want to learn more about some new ways of doing uh, music, or they are interested in training their people better. So maybe you can help them that way instead of just say, I'm going to come and make a big performance. 
So it's always thinking about the other one so that in the end you have a win-win instead of just what I want. And let me try and persuade you that what I want is good.